Alleluia. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to another time here in His presence. Another opportunity, another day to be with the presence of Christ today. I want to encourage you to keep your eyes on Jesus. There are many voices in the world. There are many things that scream for your attention. There are many things, many voices in your flesh, in your soul, in your emotions, and your thoughts that deter you away from being aware of His presence in the moment. I want to encourage you to lay all of your burdens down and just be with Him. If you're struggling today, keep your eyes on Christ. If you don't know what to do today, keep your eyes on Christ. If you're overcome with maybe a situation in your life, just be with Him. Sometimes it's not about trying to figure something out. It's simply about being present with the Lord. Amen. So I want to encourage you, keep your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can, please help us by starting this stream strong, by giving it a thumbs up. We've been having some very strange issues with our YouTube channel, and it's just the enemy, really, uh, with the strange little situations with streamings being blocked and things being taken off so bear with us and uh, give it a thumbs up so that it helps the algorithm so that we're able to engage as much as possible for the glory of god praise god let's take a moment and let's just worship him
Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its going down. The Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all heavens, nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who dwells on on high, who humbles himself to behold the things that are in the heavens and that are in the earth. He raises the poor out of the dust and lifts the needy out of the ash heap, that he may seat him with princes, with the princes of his people, he grants the barren woman a home like a joyful mother of children. Praise the Lord. Give you praise. I worship you. The splendor of your holiness and majesty. Presence, O oh God. With open arms. When we were far apart. When we were far apart. You came running with open arms. When we were far apart. You came. give you glory Lord there's none like you and full of passion that's how he made you just let it happen you're full of life and full of passion that's how he made you just let it happen you're full of life now, full of passion. We give you praise. So we made you to set it happen. And he calls each one of us by your name.
praise and majesty all dominion belongs to you you are the life giver and the life bringer you are the giver of all gifts and we sit in your presence and we worship you the name of the lord is worthy to be praised and adored cloak us in your majesty I don't know who needs to hear this, but there's someone here. You're like a blank canvas, and the Lord is painting a fresh portrait. Some of you, the Lord wants to reset. Let God be the master artist in your life. Let him paint the canvas of your heart. Your life is the canvas. The canvas only needs to be still. Let the painter paint. <laughs> Let him paint you into his image and likeness, conforming you to him.
to the beginning. And worship your holy presence. Bring us to simplicity, Lord. By your glory, O oh Lord. is our refuge and strength a very present health and trouble therefore we will not fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though its waters roar and are troubled though the mountains shake with its swelling there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God will help her just at the break of dawn. You are our help and strength. Even though the waters roar in foam and thrash, you are the stiller of peace. You come into the boat with us and you cause the stilling and the ceasing of the storm. You are with us. You are very present in our time of need. His presence. 
worship the presence of Jesus Christ. Glory to your name. We worship you. Jesus is Lord. Praise and adore. the beauty of His holiness. Blessed be Your name. Blessed be Your name. Religious spirits hate the glory of God. Let your glory shine in our hearts, O God, like the day star rising. Oh, how we worship your presence and mighty glory. There is none like you in all this earth. The heavens declare your very glory. you glory we give you worship we give you praise glory and power belong to you lamb of god
praise, praise, praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. When you make the glory of God the center of your attention in life, the enemy can try, but he cannot. Rejoice. Whenever people insult you and say all sorts of evil against you, you're in good company. Worship His presence. The Spirit of glory rests on you. Though the waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake, God is your strength. And He is very present in help in trouble. Therefore, do not fear. is here. He wants you to worship
glory. All honor. Precious Lord, 
We sense your presence here. What a treasure you are. You are the gift. Our exceedingly great reward. Come close tonight. Trust us with your heart, with your glory. This is our prayer. So you'd show us your glory. And what Jesse preached this morning, the cloud of his presence would come. And that we wouldn't be needed. As the priests could not minister because of the weight of your presence. I want our hearts to be knit together tonight, church, in one accord, crying and panting, show me your glory. Show us your glory. Oh, hallelujah. This is wonderful. We worship you, God. And we stand in awe tonight your faithfulness, the fact that you want to come so close, and help us yield, Holy Spirit, to you. Lift Jesus so high tonight. We don't want to ever recover from his touch. So we lift our hands tonight, Lord, as, a, as an act of surrender. We've come to glorify you. We have no agenda but the wind of the Spirit. Fall in this room. Oh, how we worship. Do in others tonight what you did to me here in this room. 32 years ago. I feel like you've been waiting, precious Jesus. You've been waiting to come again. How we need you. Let hearts burn tonight. Start now, I pray. Let the flame, the candle of the Holy Spirit burn in us. Your word says, it's the heart of man, not the lamp of the Lord. Is it not the candle of the Lord? Light the flame and burn us up, burn us up, burn us up, consuming fire, burn us up tonight. As you minister to him, he wants to minister to you. Though the waters roar and are troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, to fear because God is your very refuge and strength he's very present a very present help in trouble 
therefore you will not need to fear. Just keep your eyes on the Lord and magnify Him. Linda Brandle, I keep seeing you like this. Like this. And I see like the, the Spirit of God with great compassion. He's saying, look at me. I am your strength. Don't pay attention to the voices on the outside. You look to me. I am your strength. Lock eyes with me. The infusion of strength is for you. see as you're locking with him locking eyes with him it's like a saturation of strength going into you Melinda Brandle the pleasure of the Lord is with you he is pleased with you and he grants you strength and peace Consolation of the Holy Spirit. The consoling work of the Spirit. You are from Melissa Brown. Like a father is comfort and consolation is infused in your soul. He is pleased with you. You lock eyes with me. I have the reins. doesn't matter what others say 
I am your strength and I am your comfort. He has the reins on your life. Stillness and strength are your portion, Melissa. We come in by the blood of the Lamb, by this new and living way. By this new and living way. He is pleased with you, and his strength is here to impart to your spirit. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help and trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of the dawn. We come in by the blood of the Lamb. We come in by the blood of the Lamb. Do not your hearts, do not allow your hearts to be troubled. We come in by the blood of Jesus. We come in by the blood. fight for you and you shall hold your peace
do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You fight for us. Stand still and we see Jesus, salvation. You are salvation.
worship you. You, Lord, are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Think on this. Give us a deep revelation of Jesus. Meditate on that reality. That word Selah means think, pause. Every day, day by day, we are in need of you. We are broken, weak vessels that need you every day. You are the sustainer of our lives. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. in time of trouble. You keep us, sustain us by your grace. And your grace is Christ. You're our daily portion daily need. You were the bread for the long journey ahead. You are the head of the church. You're the bread of life. We consume you, Lord.
even when we have no strength, you become our very strength. That I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate. Is all that you ask of us. I will sing praises. What you ask of us is to abide. Abide. To make you our home. That's what you desire of us. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face.
how we love you, Lord. Sometimes we can look for something else and miss him now. Sometimes we can be too focused on what he's going to do. rather than being aware that he's here now. If we have him, what else do we need? He's here now. Somebody needs to hear that. He's here now. You're waiting for something to show up. He's here now. He's with you now. He is your strength. And your refuge, very present, a very present help in trouble. He's here now. Do you understand what that means? Look what, look what it says. It says, this is Psalm 46. And we're going to read verses 1 all the way down to 11. And I want you to see something here. Look what it says. It says, God, God, is our refuge and strength. Now let's pause there. It doesn't say God has refuge and strength. It doesn't say that God has it, like if it's something that he gives. It says God is our refuge and strength. 
Do you see that? He is our refuge and strength. He doesn't have just strength to give. He just doesn't have refuge to offer. No, he is our refuge. He is our strength. That is to say that he must be everything. We look too much at his hands, what he can give, what he can offer, what he can provide, not realizing that everything we need is in God. If you need strength, you need God. If you need refuge, you need God. We often look for the things that he wants to do, not realizing that it's him that we need. God is our refuge. What does that mean? Refuge is something that you, you're you running away from and you find shelter in. When you take refuge, it's because you're, 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 you're fleeing from something and you take refuge, you take a dwelling place, you take... You go to a place of safety. God is our refuge. Though there are many things in our lives, there are many issues that scream at us. So many times we run and we run to other things. Seeking refuge. But our refuge is in the presence of God. He himself is your safety. He himself is your very, very protection. And strength. Are you weak? Do you feel that you have no more strength to offer? There are many people on this stream that they give and they give and they give and they give themselves dry and there's no more strength left to give. There are marriages that have become cracked and dry because there's nothing else to give because their strength has gone dry strength are you needing strength well what your need is is him see he just doesn't offer us strength he is strength He is strength. The closer you draw near, the more strength you'll receive because he is strength. We don't look to strength. We look to him to receive strength. The reason why some are drying out is because they're giving off of fumes. They're, it's, like, it's like an empty tank of gas. There's nothing else to give. But when, when you are with the infiller, he continues to give and continues to give of himself. And when you have God, you have all that you need. You truly do. He is Strength. Read that first phrase again. God is 
our refuge and strength. Now notice, it's not God was our refuge and strength, or God is going to be our refuge and strength. No. It says God is. That's a present tense. God is, meaning he is very, very present. God is in the moment with you. He is your refuge. (laughs) He is your strength. He is, look, a very present help in trouble. A very present help. Not present help, a very present help. He is beyond present. He is very present. He is closer than the air that you breathe. He is closer to your very breath. He is closer to you than your skin. He is closer to you than you've even realized. Because he's in you. He is a very present help in time of need. This is pretty cool. The word present here, it means to attain, to find a thing sought, straw, water, grass. (laughs) He is your sustainer. We're the sheep of his pasture. We receive water. We receive grass (laughs) like a sheep. In his very presentness, he's here to help in time of trouble. It reminds me of the passage in Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, and we'll go there. Verse 26. Oops, give me a second here. Put in the comments, he's our present help. God is present. This is Romans chapter 8, verse 26. It says as follows, it says, Likewise, the Spirit, who is the Spirit? The Lord. Likewise, the Spirit also does what? Helps. He helps. Notice that's present tense. The Spirit also doesn't say helped. It doesn't say will help. No. It says likewise the Spirit also helps. That's present tense. In our what? Weakness. And our weaknesses. Do you see that? The Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. What is a weakness? Your frailty, your fragility, your brokenness, your infirmity. It's the word athenia, weakness. It can mean weakness, it can mean disease or sickness. It can what it what it means is our weakness. When someone's sick, they're weak, right? Their bodies are weak. But there's also a spiritual weakness, a soulish weakness, a mental weakness. our brokenness. The Spirit also helps us in our weakness. This is Romans chapter 8, 
verse 26. Look what it says here. It says, For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Isn't that awesome? Paul, the man that wrote three quarters of the New Testament, the great apostle Paul, had a secret. He did not know what he should pray for. So you should be encouraged when you don't know what to do in your time with God. (laughs) When you don't know what to say in your moments with God, you should be encouraged to know that even the great apostle Paul did not know what to pray for as we ought to. But it says, but the Spirit himself, you see, the Spirit himself makes intercession. He's praying for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. You see, he is praying for you. The Holy Ghost is praying for you. Now, this may offend some religious thoughts, but God is praying for you. You have Jesus who is making intercession at the right hand of the Father for us, and you have the Holy Spirit who is our present help. He himself is making intercession. He searches the hearts, and knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints. He makes prayer according to the will of God. Notice, this is all in present tense. He is our help. He helps us in our weakness. The Spirit is your helper. Look at what verse 29 says. And we know that some things, one thing, several things, no. We know that all things, not just some, all things work together for good. To whom? To you, to those who are, to those who love God. Do you love God? Then we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. God has this ability to make things pan out for his glory and causes all things to work together for good. But it's made for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? If you are a believer, you are. Have you been born again, washed by the blood of Jesus? All things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All things. Type it down. Put it in the comments. All things. Verse 29. For whom he foreknew. See, he knew you in advance. He also predestined. He chose you to be conformed to the image of his son. Your life exists for one purpose, conformity to Christ. And the purpose of conformity to Christ is to bring glory to him. You see, it's not about your best life now. It's not about being the best version of yourself. It's about the flesh being slain by the work of the Spirit 
to be conformed to Jesus for his glory. He is the master artist. And an artist wants to paint his picture on an empty canvas. This is why we're born again. We have a clean slate. But every day, we have to be willing to lay our lives down daily so that he can continue to form you according to his image. Moreover, those whom he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. You are justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. He wants to glorify himself. And one day, he is going to glorify us. Now, when I say that, I'm saying this in contact with, context with verse 30, that there's going to be a glorification, meaning the fullness of our salvation, the redemption of our bodies. But we're not going to get into that topic today. I simply want to hone in on the fact that he is our helper. So let's go back to, to Psalm 46. Is this helping someone today? I pray that it's reinvigorating and refreshing your spirit. He's your refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. He's so present. Even when you don't feel it or sense it, he is present. Why? Because his word says it. And God is not a liar. He does not lie. He is present. How do I access this help? Get into his presence where he's present. He is your help. He is your helper in trouble. Do you know what trouble is? Trouble, the word trouble can mean to stir. When something, like when there's a pond and you stir the water or you're throwing stuff in it, that's troubling. And sometimes we experience in our lives trouble, troubles and troublings. Sometimes in our soul, we experience troubles. When trouble happens, what do we do? You know, Jesus never promised us to remove the trouble. He says, in this life, you will have trouble. You will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Sometimes troubles come, but the promise is that he's very present in trouble. Rejoice when there's troubles. Rejoice when people say all sorts of things that accuse you. Rejoice when people mishandle you, mistreat you, misunderstand you. Rejoice. Why? Because if you have eyes to see it, you will see that he's with you. Have you ever noticed? I don't know. I can't speak for you, but I can definitely speak to me. 
that the moments that I have sensed the presence and power of God the strongest was in my lowest moments. The moments that I was so much in despair came right in time, the breaker. Breakthrough only happens when there's trouble. Help only happens when there's issues. And guess what? In this life, we will have trouble. But we can rejoice knowing that all things will work together for the good of those who love God. See, this is something that is not often preached about or taught about because all we want is to be blessed. All we want is for everything to be perfect. But the reality is that there are troubles. The reality is there are persecutions. You want the spirit of glory in your life? You better be prepared to suffer trouble. First Peter 4.14 shows us this beautiful imagery here. Look at this. Listen to this. Beloved. This is verse 12 through 14. Beloved. Know this. You are beloved. Do you know what that means? You are loved. You are loved by the Lord. Beloved, do not think it's strange. Don't think it's something weird concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. As though some strange thing happened to you. You see, what we don't realize so many times when trials come, we forget that we're loved. We're beloved. And oftentimes we're like, what on earth is happening? And we think it's strange, like concerning the trial that tries us. He says, don't think it's strange. Then he tells us, rejoice. But rejoice. He tells you to put on joy to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings. Everybody wants to walk in the glory of God. Do you want the glory of God in your life? Do you want the manifested glory of God to be present with you? Do you want to tap into the awareness of the glory of the Lord in your life? Then you also have to take the cup of suffering. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, plural. The sufferings of Christ. There are a lot of sufferings that come. Rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy, if you are reproached or insulted for the name of Christ, blessed are you. You are blessed. You see, we don't realize the blessedness that we have, but we are blessed. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed but on your part, he is glorified. Do you see that? You wonder why you're going through so many troubles? Well, you're, 
crying out for the glory of God and you want to see his manifested glory in your life and the spirit of glory rests on you, rejoice. <laughs> Troubles come. But we can rejoice knowing the fact that the spirit of glory rests on us. The spirit of glory rests on you. Let's go back. Let's go back to Psalm 46. Isn't his word so alive? Isn't his word so powerful? And we're, we, even, we haven't even scratched the surface. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, therefore, what does therefore mean? It means this is the reason why we will not fear. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. There is nothing to fear. Nothing. Why? Because God himself is your refuge. God himself is your strength. Therefore, we will not fear. And then he hyperbolizes, even though the earth be removed, which one day will. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Now, it tells you here, this beautiful word on the bottom there, Selah, Selah, which means pause, think about this, reflect on this. What God is trying to make us understand that he wants us to pause about this. He wants us to think on these things, meditate on them. And notice that this psalm is a song. Psalm 46. It's a song, which shows us another meaning. That in everything, even though the waters come, even though the troublings come, even though all the all this all these things happen, the waters roar and are troubled and mountains shake. He, this psalm is still a song. And the deep, the deep meaning of this is that our hearts, the posture of our heart is worship. The posture of our heart, the perspective of, the perception, the foundation of what we're meditating stems from the heart of a song of praise. Think on this. He is your refuge. He is your strength. He's very present in help of trouble. We will not need to fear even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst into the sea, the waters are troubled and the mountains shake with its swelling. Think about that. And then, after thinking about this, here's another thing to meditate on. He says this, there is a river whose streams, streams shall make glad the city of God. Now, back in these days, during these times, and even till this day, cities are built upon streams and rivers. Some of the greatest civilizations on earth were surrounded by rivers and streams. 
to give water to the people of the city. Water represented so many things to the people of the city. Water provided hydration when they were thirsty. Water provided sanitation that would clean themselves in these rivers or streams. Water also provided for their crops and their agriculture. Water provided food for them, literally, because the streams would go into, they would irrigate these streams and they would go into their crops and the crops would, would grow and they would be food for them. This was the culture of the Davidic dynasty. And with that cultural context in mind, look at what we're seeing here. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. It's not just one stream. It's multiple streams. They make glad the city of God. What is he trying to tell us here? That the river, the streams of living water, provide the quenching of thirst, provide the sanitation and the cleansing of the people of the city of God, provide nutrients for crops, food, nourishment. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. And then he tells you the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, which shows you this. What is the river whose stream shall make glad the city of God? It's the holy place. The holy place is the river what is the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High? It's the place of worship. During the time of David, during the time of David, they had the temple and the tabernacle. And we did some teaching on this before. But what do we see? We see the outer court. We see the inner court. We see the holy place where the priests would sacrifice and praise and worship. And then you had the most holy place. What he's saying is the river who sustains, the rivers of sustaining, the streams that make glad the city of God is the presence of God, the holy place, the tabernacle of the most high. Do you see that? Do you see that? What is he trying to tell us here? The presence of God, the holy presence of God is what nourishes us, what sustains us, what feeds us, what cleanses us. It is his presence. The river is in the holy place of the tabernacle. And what do we see? What is the tabernacle? Well, yes, in the book of Psalms, <laughs> my son is like looking at me, sticking out his tongue. <laughs> A little four-year-old. The tabernacle was where the temple presence of the glory of God was, the chavod of God. But in the new covenant, in the light of the new, we are the tabernacle of the, of the dwelling place of God. Where is the river? It's in us. It's not because of us. It's because of his spirit within us. You see. Do you see how beautiful this is? There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. 
the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. You see this? The holy place. What is the river? The holy place of the tabernacle of, of whom? The Most High. Now, the Most High here is God. Again, worship the Most High. The Most High. You see? The Most High. Even in the description of, it is always exalting in worship and praise. There is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. It doesn't say the tabernacle of God, even though there, it is talking about God. He says the description of the Most High. You see? He's, he's not just high and lifted up. He is Most High. He is the highest of heights. He is the Most High highest of all things. Jesus is the name above every name. The most high. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Who is her? The tabernacle. It's you and I. We're the people of God. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. You will not need to be moved. Why? Because God is in the midst of you. God shall help her. There is the word help again. And then look at what it says. Just at the break of dawn. Just at the break of dawn, what do we see there? What is the reality that we're seeing in this? That God is always present to help us in trouble and just at the break of dawn. What is dawn? Dawn is when the sun begins to break forth. Sorrow comes, though sorrow and weeping are in the night, joy comes in the morning. You know what's really awesome about God? In Genesis chapter 1, God, the way that he describes a day in creation, we look at day and night, and that's a day. A day and a night, that's a day. But in the biblical description of a day, it's evening and morning, the first day. Evening and morning, the second day. See, God doesn't view it as the, the, from, from day to night, he views it from evening to morning. There's so many parallels to that. In evening, you have troubles. In evening, what is it? What is evening? This is when the sun is going down, where it looks like there's darkness, but then there's morning. The breaking of the dawn is when you will see his glory. You see what I'm saying? Evening and morning, evening and morning. That is how God sees it. Evening. It reminds me of the gospels in the gospel account in Mark. It says, when evening had come. They presented to Jesus all those who were vexed with devils and diseased, and he healed them all when evening had come. You see, there is an evening in our lives where the sun appears to be setting, where it begins to grow bleak and dark. But we can rejoice that the dawn will break into light. Evening and morning also speaks of a prophetic parallel of the end of the age. When the tribulation comes and there's distress and there's the darkness that falls just at the break of dawn, the son of David, the son of the Most High, breaks through the heavens and establishes his eternal day forever. Remind yourself of this reality. When, you, when it's evening 
and there's mourning. That's God's perspective. That's how God sees day. (laughs) And that's how we ought to see it too. God will move at the break of the day. I mean, the break of dawn, which is the darkest hour. Your troubles are dark. The situations are bleak. But God breaks at the dawn. Trials come. And at the breaking of the day, he comes and he aids and he meets us in our darkest moment. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord is with you. Now look at what he says. The Lord of hosts. You see this? The Lord of hosts. What is a host? It's the hosts are the armies. The Lord of heaven's armies is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Now, why would he tell us this? Well, what happened with Jacob? Remember what happened when the evening came, when it was twilight, when it was the darkest. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord till the till the till the dawn. And and Jacob received a blessing. And he was given a new name. He went from Jacob to Israel. The word Jacob is, it means supplanter or deceiver. But he was given a new name, Israel, prince with God. Prince with God. He is with us. He didn't let go. Jacob did not let go of God until God blessed him. He said, let me go for the dawn. It's about to break. The dawn's about to break. The light is about to arise. Let me go. What is it that you want? The angel of the Lord breaks his hip (laughs) and gives him a new name. You see, because when you contend with God and you hold on to God for dear life, even when troubles come, you'll have a new identity and you will walk differently, just like Jacob. There is a breaking. Jacob walked with a limp the rest of his life. (laughs) And when we abide with God and we contend into his presence, he, he breaks us. He changes the way we walk and he gives us a new name. This is the God that's with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Maybe one day we'll do a teaching on Jacob, but for now we don't have time. And then he says, think on this, Selah, think on this. Now watch this. It says this, it says, come, come, behold the works of the Lord who has made the desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. He causes the battle to be destroyed and dissolved. He causes the wars to cease. 
You see this? If you're hearing my little one over there talking over there, I apologize. It says, come. He makes the wars to cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. You see this? So he tells us, he's your help. He's our need. He's our very present help in time of trouble. He makes the wars to cease. He burns the chariot in the fire and it ends with be still. Be still. When something is still, there is, there is no action. There is no troubling. See, trouble comes from the outside, but the, but the opposite of trouble is stillness. But that's your responsibility. He tells you to be still. And know that he is God. Not that I was or I'm going to be. No, be still and know that I am God. I am present with you. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in all the earth. How is the earth? Will how is the earth? going to see the exaltation of the Lord when the people of God and when the city of God learns to be still and know him. When a people are still and know that he is, the nations will see the exaltation of Christ. The nations will see the exalted God that we know to be present with us. Again, it ends. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our, tr is our refuge. He is with you. You see this? Be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This sounds exactly like Exodus 14.14. 14. If this stream has been a blessing, please do me a favor and give this stream a thumbs up. And share this with someone that is going through trouble. I want you to see this. This sounds just like the Exodus account. Look at this. We'll read Exodus chapter 14 verses 10 through 14. Exodus chapter 14 verses 10 through 14. We see something here. The children of Israel have escaped Egypt. The slavery of the, of the worldly system goes into the wilderness, begins to, to worship. They move on to march out. And it says, and when Pharaoh drew near, see Pharaoh started chasing after them, the chariots, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. So they were very afraid. And the children of Israel 
cried out to the Lord. Do you see this? They were afraid. The children of Israel were being hunted down by the Egyptians. Mind you, this is like one of the greatest civilizations at that time. They had spears, they had bows, they had chariots, they had they had the best of the best. And it says, the Egyptians marched after them. They were very afraid. Have you ever been afraid? Have you ever been faced by a very real threat and situation? And what happens? They were afraid, and the children of Israel did what? They cried to the Lord. They cried to the Lord. See, God heard their cry. Then they said to Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone so that we may serve the Egyptians? It would have been even better for us to serve the Egyptians that we would not die in the wilderness. You know that you can cry to the Lord and still have the wrong perspective. You know that you can cry to the Lord and still have the wrong viewpoint. You can do all the crying to the Lord and still have the wrong perception. You see, they responded in their flesh. They saw the real situation, and so they acted out of their souls. You understand? They acted in their souls. They acted accordance to what they saw. They saw, they cried out, they freaked out. And they said it would have been better for us to leave, leave us alone. And Moses said to the people, look at what he says, do not be afraid. Feeling is a, do, do not be led by your feeling, your fear. How many times are we led by our feelings and our fears? We are not to be led by our fear. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. And then what does he say? Remember Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I'm God. Look what he says. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. You see? The flesh, the soul gets agitated, fear creeps in, and we do everything other than to look and to stand still. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. See the salvation of the Lord. You know what that word salvation is in the Hebrew? I'll show it to you so you don't think I'm making this up. It's the word Yeshua. There it is. Stand still. Because Yeshua means salvation. And I almost feel that prophetically, this shows us a beautiful reality. Stand still and see Jesus. 
Stand still and see Yeshua Jesus. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. (laughs) So what does that show us? That shows us we need to be still and know that he is God. We need to be still and keep our eyes on Christ, our salvation. And he says, for the Egyptians whom you see today shall you see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You see this? And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. (laughs) Do you understand? Stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord. Our flesh cry out, our fears cry out, all sorts of things. And our responsibility is to stand still and see the Lord. Enter into his presence. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You see. And we know the story. Continued. We know the story. The Lord began to part the waters. You know what that reminds me of? And I'll say this as the last thing that reminds me of another story where the disciples were in the boat. They were afraid. There were storms. There was waters that were troubled and the master is sound asleep. Sound asleep. And the disciple says, Lord, don't you care for us? We're going to perish. The disciples are over there rebuking (laughs) Jesus. And he wakes up and he commands the storm to be still. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. See, the disciples had the wrong perspective. We're perishing. You don't care about us, Jesus. He said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen? So, keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Master. Allow Him to be your all. Allow him, when the troubles come, know this, that just as the disciples were in the boat with Christ, Christ is in the boat with you. Hold your peace. Be still. Know that he's God. Though the waters and the troubles, though all sorts of things happen in your life, Know that God is present. He is our refuge. He is our very present help in time of trouble. Lord, I pray for every single person that is on this stream. Help us to understand that troubles can come. Help us to understand the realities of Psalm 
46. That you are a refuge and strength. You are a very present help in trouble. We will not fear, even though the earth be removed and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled and the mountains shake with its swelling, we will not be troubled because we know, Lord, that there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. And the streams that make us glad is the holy place of your divine presence. You are in the midst of us. We will not be moved. You will help us just at the break of dawn. Evening and morning comes day by day and you break. At the breaking of dawn, you come and meet us. The kingdoms were moved. You uttered your voice. The earth melts. You are with us, Lord of hosts. You are with us because you are the God of Jacob. And as we hold on to you, you change us into your very image because you are presently aware as we are presently aware of you. We are still and we know that you are God. Father, we will see your salvation. You will be exalted among the nations. You will be exalted in all the earth because you are with us. You, God of Jacob, are our refuge. And we give you glory. We give you praise. When troubles come, when situations arise, we can rejoice in your goodness and your grace. We give you glory and honor and praise. May your name be exalted. May your name be glorified. We choose you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. All right, guys, listen, the stream has been a little bit longer than usual because of Christmas break and all the, all these wonderful things. But listen, we're going to we're, we're what we're trying to do is the stream should be by 6 15 central time to about 8 39 a.m so this we're, we're we have to cut it short because of the schedule my personal schedule okay i don't have any more time i have things i have to get going i think robber and bestie are online so i will see you guys i'll give you guys a call in a little bit so we can connect if this stream has been a blessing to you, if this channel has been a blessing to you, share the love, pass this with a friend. If you know someone that's going through trouble, share this stream with them. If you want to partner with us, we certainly appreciate this very much. It is in my heart to do free e-courses, free e-books, everything free we want to give everything away because we've freely received and we freely want to give and so we we want you to know that the only way to do that is it costs finances to do that and so i want to encourage you i want to encourage you to consider partnering with us monthly it really does go a long way and all of the proceeds go directly into the ministry and i want to say to all of the partners thank you so much for partnering with our ministry we're able to do so much like create free resources and free uh, materials that we want to continue to create and also keep us in prayer we have some trips coming up we've got uh where, where are we going jesus honduras san pedro sula 
in Honduras in July. And then we have another trip over in Chiapas, Mexico. And we're not able to do that unless we have faithful partners of the ministry. And so we want to say thank you for those who have partnered with us. We really appreciate that your seed is helping us spread the gospel and to encourage the church. Amen. Hey, if you're new here, go ahead and sign up for your free ebook. I have a free ebook for you. It's called From Glory to Glory, Seven Keys to the Uncommon Spiritual Life. And um, you can go to fathersglory.org forward slash ebook. It's for you, 100% free. We want to freely give this to you. And so someone asked the question about fasting. Yes, we're going to do in the beginning of the year, we're going to do some teachings on fasting and we're going to fast together. And if the Lord is leading you to do that, we want to do that in the beginning of the year. We want to do a seven day fast. Amen. And we'll discuss that more in detail tomorrow. I'll give you the exact details um, concerning concerning um what was i gonna say our monthly partner zoom meeting for the partners i will give you a um i will give you some details concerning that tomorrow okay all right time to get going guys like this stream share this stream consider partnering with us receive your free ebook visit our website. All right. We will see you tomorrow. God bless you. And you have a wonderful day in Jesus name. Amen.